Hey guys, so today we're going to do lecture via video because I'm losing my voice and I don't think I can make it through three lectures, so sorry. Um, today <clears throat> I'll do an honest day lecture and then if you have any time left you can work on your project. Um, the homework for next week is up on the board. Um, it's a busy week next week so you need to be on your game. Uh, you have a quiz Tuesday and then an exam Friday. Also, the project is due Friday, so you need to make sure you're doing what you need to be doing uh, to be on top of things. So on this day <clears throat> in history, um, there was a telephone installed in the Oval Office in 1929. So President Hubert, Herbert Hoover installed the first telephone um, in the Oval Office at the White House. Um, it took a little bit to work correctly, like they couldn't get the lines quite right. Um, and he was a little bit frustrated about this, but it ended up working out. Um, the phones were previously used in <clears throat> the White House. They just weren't located inside of the Oval Office. They were in the front foyer, which is just outside the office, kind of like the waiting area where a secretary would be. Um, phones had been used in the White House since uh, 1878 when Rutherford B. Hayes uh, first installed one, so he was the first president to use telephones in the White House in general, but Herbert Hoover was the first one to put one in the Oval Office, and there is still um, phones in their Oval Office now. So just a quick one today. So I think most of you left off with this slide yesterday. Uh, hey, let me see if this works. I don't know if you'll be able to see me, but that's all right. You can hear my voice. So um, we left off with talking about Queen Elizabeth, uh, her 45 year reign. Um, and we were talking about how she's a leader in pursuing explorations to the new world. So this strapping young man, Sir Francis Drake, he was the first um, Englishman to circumnavigate the world. Um, and then he, his ship was called the Golden Hind. I think we touched on this yesterday. Remember he was a pirate. He preyed on Spanish ships, which was bad because English Protestants, Spanish Catholics, they already had um, some things they didn't agree about. And then it just gets further um, fought over when on the seas. Um, so Drake, again, this le leads to the Spanish Armada 1588 and the Spanish Armada is squashed by the English. Um, and it just kind of shows the power of the English during this time, during their golden age. I read this to you guys yesterday. Um, I've already joined myself in marriage to a husband, namely the kingdom of England. So I think this is where we really left off yesterday, the succession of Elizabeth. Remember, she didn't marry and she didn't have any children. So she died childless in 1603. Um, and James the fifth, or excuse me, the sixth of Scotland becomes James the first of England. Now, I think in seventh period, I told, or fifth period, I don't remember what period I told you guys this, but you know, okay, think back to when I did it on this day about Mary, Queen of Scots, and Elizabeth the first. Well, James uh, the sixth of Scotland is Mary, Queen of Scots, Scots' son. So this is going to introduce the Stuart line of kings uh, in England. Um, Elizabeth was actually his godmother, which is, I don't know how that works in uh, during this time because her and Mary didn't get along. I don't know how that was. I don't know. Uh, but James, James I, he was a patron of the, of the theater. Um, he and Shakespeare, he loved Shakespeare's um, traveling troupe that I have, a capital E in troupe. I don't know why. Sorry about that. Um, and then he also solidified the Protestant faith with the creation of the King James Bible. Now, the King James Bible is still used in some churches today. Um, and, yeah, I'm sure some of you have read in the King James Version before. Oh, okay. So this is super interesting and cool. I think I told some of you this story a couple weeks ago. But this is just like a natural well um, in Moab, which is really cool. But go back to the summer of 2016 um, we were looking for this place and we found the wrong area, just like a little farther down the road. Um, it was not the right well and kids started filling up their water bottles and drinking gross water. So that wasn't good. Nobody had, uh, any stomach issues after though, but this is a really cool, it's like a little, it's just a little hole, 
um, where water comes out and you can drink it and it's good and it's cold because it's in the shade and it's really hot there. So the kids all get out and they just, they always fill up their water bottles and it's kind of cool. Okay. William Shakespeare, 1558 to 1616. A lot of what we're going to talk about with William Shakespeare, like a lot, there's only some things known about his life. And then there's things that are speculated about his life. And then there's things that we just aren't a hundred percent sure about. Um, what we are sure about is how influential he as a, as a contributor of the Renaissance um, was we still, I, I mean, I've told you this before in high school, you will read one of his plays. Um, I, when I was in high school, they taught Othello. Um, but in my years of subbing, I think I have, um, I've watched them read like Macbeth and um, uh, Hamlet. So, and Romeo and Juliet is usually a pretty common one, but he was a very, um, influential person during this time. So let's talk about why we're going to talk about him with the Renaissance. The Italian Renaissance influences the English Renaissance, and that's what we've been talking about. Um, king Henry VIII is the king at the start of the English Renaissance. His children rule during most of this period, and the era ended soon after all of his children were dead. So remember, we have Mary, whose mother is... Okay. Uh, hopefully you said Catherine, because that would be the correct answer. And then we have Elizabeth, whose mom is Anne. Okay. And then we had little Edward, who died pretty early on, but his mom was, hopefully you nailed it. Okay, Jane. So those are his children. They ruled most of the time during the Renaissance period, because, I mean, they. I think it was about probably almost 60 years in total, all three of them. And then William Shakespeare was born while Elizabeth was queen and became a wealthy, wealthy through um, King James the first. Okay. So five provable facts about Shakespeare. Okay. He was baptized on April 26, 1564. Okay. There were no such thing as birth certificates at this time. Now you and I, we all have a birth certificate saying the day we were born, the time we were born, what we weighed, what, how long we were, who our parents are, all the things. But babies were baptized three days after their birth. So we can guess that his birth date was April 23rd, 1564. He was also married at the age of 18 to a 26 year old woman named Anne Hathaway. She was pregnant. Um, and then he fathered three children two boys, or excuse me, two girls and one boy, and his son actually died. So his two daughters <clears throat> eventually, um, well, he left everything to his two daughters. Um, and then he was a part owner of the Globe Theater in London, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And then he died on April um, 23rd, 1616. So that's kind of crazy. He died on his maybe birthday. Um, okay. So the rest is a mystery. Everything else that is known about the world's greatest writer is speculation, best guesses, and agreed upon facts. So um, historians will like take things that they know from lots of different areas and try to figure out what they can can um, take from the things that they're researching to know about Shakespeare. So due to the lack of actual evidence of Shakespeare's life, many people have questioned whether he even existed. Um, but uh, his collection of works credit him um, credit to him are all extremely similar in their uh, language. So <clears throat> it has to be one person. It couldn't be more than one person. Um, and then others argue that Shakespeare could have not been smart enough to write important literature. And then, you know, pure genius is often misunderstood. People don't understand um, others who kind of are above them in knowledge. Okay, educated guesses about Willie Shakes. That's what I like to call him. So he was one of seven children born to John and John Shakespeare and Mary Arden. Um, he was born in Stratford Upton Avon. Um, and then his family was respected, but not noble. Um, he attended grammar school and learned Latin, but other than that, there's no evidence of further education which is crazy because again, he added 300 words to the English language. I mean, come on. And then by the early 1590s, Shakespeare had left his wife and three children in Stratton, Upton Avon and travel over a hundred miles away to London to pursue his acting and writing career. So he just left his family 
Um, he lived in 